Hackers are like the superheroes of the digital world. They have the mysterious keys to unlock the secrets of the internet, but they also have the potential to cause total mayhem and destruction. In other words, they have immense power. And you know what comes with great power, right? From the ultimate martyr of the digital world to the surprisingly young and incredibly successful international criminal, here are the 20 most dangerous hackers in the world. Number 20. Kane Gamble Oh, he looks so young and innocent, right? Well, don't let appearances fool you. Kane Gamble admitted 10 breaches of IT security legislation between June of 2015 and February of 2016. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Kane Gamble is a British teenager who managed to hack the accounts of several American intelligence and homeland security officials, including ex-CIA director John Brennan. And he did it all without even leaving his little bedroom in Colville, central England. The young man managed to extort information from call centers over the phone and then use it to hack the accounts. In particular, he posed as John Brennan with telephone operators Verizon and AOL. The boy then managed to obtain several sensitive documents from the former CIA director's mailbox, including information on military and intelligence operations in Iran and Afghanistan. Then he seemed to have managed to get access to Mr. Brennan's cloud, reset the password, and then take control of John Brennan's wife's iPad, with whom he spoke on the phone while she was calling the operator AOL. I don't know about you, but I want to see a movie made about this kid right now. This young guy also targeted former Homeland Security official Jed Johnson, whom he called several times. He even managed to get the message, you are mine, to appear on the family television. Other targets included advisors to former U.S. President Barack Obama, an FBI agent, and the Justice Department network, including the dossier of the Deepwater Horizon oil rig explosion in the Gulf of Mexico. Number 19. Adrian Lamo Generally referred to as the homeless hacker for his vagrant lifestyle, Lamo is said to have spent his time between abandoned buildings and internet cafes, libraries and universities, with internet connections, examining networks, and sometimes exploiting security holes. He first attracted media attention for breaking into several high-profile computer networks, such as the New York Times, Yahoo, and Microsoft, until his arrest in 2003. In 2010, Lamo was implicated in the WikiLeaks scandal involving Chelsea Manning, who was arrested after Lamo reported her to federal authorities, claiming that Manning had leaked hundreds of thousands of classified U.S. government documents. From March of 2011, he was said to have gone into hiding because of the Manning case. However, on December 10th of 2011, he appeared in Fort Meade, Maryland, to be confronted by Chelsea Manning. Lamo had Asperger's syndrome, which was discovered after he reported his stolen backpack to the police. Police officers noted suspicious behavior and took him into custody. After being placed in psychiatric confinement for 72 hours, he was diagnosed. On March 14th of 2018, he was tragically found of unknown causes in an apartment in Wichita, Kansas. His father announced the news two days later on Facebook. Number 18. Owen Walker, a kill. In 2008, a baby-faced Owen Thor Walker, residing in New Zealand and who was barely reaching adulthood, pleaded guilty to the charges brought against him for cybercrime. Under his hacker pseudonym, Akil had the FBI on his heels for having developed a malware, thanks to which he was able to constitute a botnet. In February of 2006, he notably collaborated with a student from the University of Pennsylvania to order his botnet to attack the servers of the establishment. He's the leader of an international organization of computer hackers whose actions have caused nearly $26 million in damage. Owen Walker's also benefited from his botnet by hiring its services to accompany for the installation of adware. Walker was nonetheless acquitted by the justice of his country with only a small fine of $10,000 to pay. The boy genius in computer science also has Asperger's syndrome, and he succeeded in attracting the greed of the New Zealand police who imagined using his talents for their own benefits. It was finally the company TestraClear, a subsidiary of the Australian telecommunications company Telstra, which eventually offered a kill fire station. His mission is to advise companies so that they can better protect themselves against piracy. The irony is strong in this one. Number 17. Kevin Polson, Dark Dante. 
Kevin Lee Polson, born in 1965 in Pasadena, California, is a famous American ex-freaker and hacker, known by the pseudonym Dark Dante. He was the first hacker to be accused of espionage in the US. He's since converted to journalism and is currently editor of the online newspaper Wired News. He's also hired by the US government to fight against pedophiles on the internet. His first known act of trespassing was in 1983, when he was 17. At the time, his parents bought him a TRS-80, with which he introduced himself with an older hacker into the ARPA network, the ancestor of the internet, of UCLA. Probably due to his young age, he wasn't charged. In 1985, he was hired as a programmer by SRI International and Sun Microsystems as a computer security consultant for the Pentagon. This didn't stop him from carrying out illegal activities at the same time, though. In 1987, he came into possession of a magnetic tape containing a classified document detailing the flight plan for a military exercise called CPX Caber Dragon involving hundreds of paratroopers and taking place at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. He had also entered a network called MassNet belonging to the Army. Paulson had advanced knowledge of picking locks, which he used to break into the telephone exchanges of the telephone company Pacific Bell. He stole switches and other equipment, as well as access codes that allowed him to wiretap the members of the company's security team, responsible for tracking him down. He also seized unpublished telephone numbers belonging to the Soviet consulate in San Francisco. Number 16. Albert Gonzalez Kumba Johnny. Kuba Johnny and two accomplices were arrested for hacking 130 million credit cards, the largest virtual theft carried out in history. Their operation, Get Rich or Die Trying, has been thought out down to the smallest detail. Gonzalez was studying the list of the 500 largest American companies to identify the most promising. He then went to the targeted stores to identify their method of payment at checkouts and try to understand their weakness. Later, Albert Gonzalez and his accomplices leased, under false names, computers in the state of New Jersey, California, Illinois, the Republic of Latvia, Holland, and Ukraine. All their editing was based on the weakness of the SQL programming language, commonly used in databases. Once introduced to the systems of the targeted companies, the hackers installed particularly effective malware software. Capable of fooling 20 antivirus programs, this software created a backdoor, and the hackers could thusly regularly visit the systems of their victims, intercept credit card transactions in real time before they were encrypted, then transmit the information to their many computers, and finally erase all traces of their passage. From October 2006 to May 2008, hackers were able to siphon the numbers of 130 million cards. They then sold this information to the highest bidder on the internet. It's estimated that the sale price of a card varies from $10 to $100, depending on its limits imposed on by the credit card. Number 15. Kevin Mitnick, the Condor. Nicknamed the Condor, or the Dark Side Hacker, Kevin Mitnick is undoubtedly the precursor of computer hacking, the first real hacker in history. Now 59, he leads a tidy life as an IT consultant for his own company. However, his life is worthy of a real heist movie. At only 17, he made a name for himself by breaking into a telephone exchange, capable of diverting subscriber calls as he pleased. Even if today this kind of crime no longer impresses anyone, it was nevertheless at the time. In 1981, a small masterstroke. The concept was totally different then, and the American population was only discovering the precepts of the internet. Two years later, he experienced his first stroke when he broke into the files of a Pentagon computer. He did it again and got caught by the FBI. During his sentence, he was held in conditions reserved for the worst criminals. Coming out of prison, he was absolutely forbidden to approach any potentially computer hackable object. He then decided to live like an Amish. Yeah, right. Depicted as an ultra dangerous character by the media and legal authorities, he was seen by society as the man who could hijack their businesses, but that's it. Because he was the very first virtual criminal, people had no idea the extent of how dangerous computer data hacking can be. And the world wasn't as computerized back then. The ones that were the most worried and the most scared of Condor were the governments, knowing he could easily access their top secret files. Having already cracked the most efficient systems of the time, like Pac Bell, Fujitsu, Motorola, Nokia, and Sun Microsystems. Number 14. Jonathan James Comrade. 
He could have just been one hell of a prankster. At barely 13 years old, he had fun breaking into the computer network of the schools in his town. Then he hacked into the Bell South Telephone Company's website and replaced the homepage with humorous messages to prove his genius. This is just a demonstration of Bell South's miserable security, which is why if I didn't have a free phone plan, I would have chosen AT&T. At the time, Comrade lived with his parents in Pinecrest, south of Miami, and computers are something he knows well. He got into it when he was six years old, with such frenzy that his father had to confiscate the family computer on which he spent his nights. It's said that he ran away for them to return the computer to him, if they only knew what he was capable of. Jonathan was only 16 when he infiltrated the NASA network in 1999. The US Space Agency was robbed of files and software worth $1.7 million, including one containing the source code of the International Space Station. Because of this intrusion, NASA had to shut down its systems for three weeks in order to repair them. He was quickly arrested, but he didn't serve any prison time because of his young age. Number 13, Vladimir Levin. In 1995, Vladimir Levin, a mathematics and biochemistry graduate of St. Petersburg Technology University, led a Russian hacker group in the first ever publicly known virtual international bank robbery. Using a laptop in London, Levin was able to gain access to the Citibank network and obtain a list of customer codes and passwords. He then logged on exactly 18 times over the course of several weeks. He managed to transfer a whopping total of $3.7 million to accounts his accomplices had control over, spread across the US, Germany, Finland, Israel, and the Netherlands. Although Citibank was able to recover all but around 400,000 of the stolen funds, they contacted the authorities who, in turn, tracked down Levin and arrested him at a London airport. This was March of 1995. After a long battle attempting to avoid extradition, Levin ultimately lost and was eventually sent to the US for trial. He was convicted and sentenced to three years in prison as well as being ordered to pay Citibank back $240,000. Four other members of his group also pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit bank fraud and serve their respective sentences. Number 12, Gary McKinnon Solo. Born in Glasgow in 1966, Gary McKinnon is an autodidact computer scientist who considers this field as a hobby. His first job was installing and configuring Microsoft Windows workstations. Subsequently, he moved on to other functions. For fun, he worked on video game programs and experimented with his talent in various advanced fields like artificial intelligence, genetic algorithms, fuzzy logic computer graphics, and much more. Solo was accused by the US of carrying out the biggest military computer hack of all time. Not bad, huh? He apparently broke into 97 computers belonging to the US Army and NASA in 2001 and 2002. The US computer networks in question belong to NASA, the Army, the Navy, Department of Defense, Air Force, and the Pentagon. The US estimates that the crimes he was charged with caused damages valued at between $700,000 and $800,000. McKinnon protested that he was only looking to establish the existence of spacecraft of extraterrestrial origin and said he was absolutely certain that the Americans had succeeded in recovering extraterrestrial anti-gravity technology. To say he was eccentric is an understatement. At one point in his life, he stopped cleaning himself and lived in his bathrobe in his apartment. You can imagine that his girlfriend left him after that. He spent his days and nights hacking into US military computers, obsessed with finding information about aliens, and all from his ex-girlfriend's aunt's house in North London. Number 11. Michael Calce, Mafia Boy. He gained notoriety after launching a series of denial of service attacks in February of 2000 against major commercial websites including Yahoo, Amazon.com, Dell, E-Trade, eBay, and CNN. And he was only 15 years old. The attacks, which made international headlines, reportedly cost the companies a total of approximately $1.7 billion. The FBI and the RCMP began to take an interest in Mafia Boy after he claimed on IRC that he was the author author of the cyber attacks. He became the prime suspect after bragging about shutting down Dell's website, information that had not been released at the time. He was arrested on April 15th of 2000. Mafia Boy used software provided by other crackers. It was clear to the FBI and RCMP watching him that he was not a skilled hacker, but rather an unrefined script kitty. 
He defined himself as between the two, yet his actions remain, to this day, one of the attacks that caused the most casualties in history. Mafia Boy used software created by other hackers because he didn't know enough C++ language to create his own denial of service programs. For his attacks, he also used the Trino software, which he designed with another member of the group of hackers that he belonged to, called TNT. Number 10. Syrian Electronic Army these guys are a group of hackers whose creation dates back to the beginning of the Syrian Civil War in 2011. Composed mainly of young Syrians, the SEA is responsible for numerous cyber attacks against Western media that they consider hostile to Bashar al-Assad, including the BBC, the New York Times, CNN.com, Agence France Press, the Washington Post, or even the Financial Times. The non-governmental organization Human Rights Watch, as well as Microsoft, have also been victims of hacking of some of their services. The group presents itself as a group of enthusiastic young Syrians who could not remain passive in the face of the massive distortion of facts about the uprising in Syria. In 2013, one of the representatives described the group as wanting to protect their country from the media campaign in Syria, which they say is filled with lies and fabrication by the media. Hacking experts describe them as unsophisticated people who would betray an organization with very few resources. But the Syrian Electronic Army's major attack was hacking into the Associated Press's Twitter account. On April 23rd of 2013, a tweet from the agency announced two explosions at the White House and the injury of President Barack Obama. The information was released shortly after the Boston Marathon bombings and seemed sufficiently credible and caused a general panic on Wall Street, which caused a loss of $136 billion in market cap. Number 9. Lizard Squad the vast majority of attacks carried out by Lizard Squad are denial-of-service attacks. This type of hack consists of drowning servers under a very large influx of requests in order to cause an overload and prevent them from functioning. It's a well-known attack by Black Hack hackers that does not require exceptional computer security skills. On the other hand, the greater the target, the greater the material resources necessary for the attack. And this is where Lizard Squad stands out. The group has taken on very heavy infrastructure. The online game networks of Microsoft and Sony consoles, Xbox Live, and the PlayStation Network were all attacked on several occasions during the month of December 2014. On Christmas Day, both services were taken offline, with Sony's being the most severely impacted. The attacks were claimed by Lizard Squad on Twitter. The group's the author of other misdeeds as well. In addition to the hack of Malaysia Airlines' homepage, Lizard Squad hacked Machinima.com, a video game streaming site. One of the group's many Twitter accounts posted bomb threats about a particular flight. On board was John Smeedley, president of Sony Online Entertainment, a subsidiary of the group focused on online video games. His flight was diverted. When they were when asked to justify their crimes, the pirates answered that they do it for the lulls. Number 8. Anonymous They need no introduction. They are anonymous. The exact date of the creation of Anonymous remains unknown to this day. But since 2003, the collective began to take credit for various hacks and DDoS attacks. To communicate, members of the community have established codes. When they appear in public, for example, they wear the mask of Guy Fox, a character from the film V for Vendetta. This mask, guaranteeing their anonymity, appeared for the first time during the demonstrations in front of the headquarters of the Church of Scientology in 2008 and became their signature from then on. Anonymous claims in their terms freedom of speech and the absolute open of the internet, which they pursue through hacking campaigns. They started small by, for example, deleting articles on websites, texts that they believe challenge this notion of freedom of expression. The community also regularly practices doxing, which consists of collecting the target's personal data before exposing it publicly as widely as possible. Anonymous actively takes on organizations that they believe violate the core values of the group. The Church of Scientology, the governments, that of Australia, Egypt, Iran, and Zimbabwe, anti-LGBTQ groups, those are only glimpses of their targets. Anonymous is also known to be a group of hacktivists with a very peculiar and hilarious sense of humor. Number 7. George Hotz he became known for his work on unlocking the iPhone, as well as for being the first to hack the PlayStation 3, earning him a big fat lawsuit from Sony. 
He's currently working on autonomous vehicle projects with the company Kama.ai, which he founded in 2015. On August 21st of 2007, he succeeded in unlocking the telephone function of the iPhone. Until then, it was impossible to use outside of the framework of a subscription with AT&T. Hotz posted his essay on his blog for three weeks, helped by four other hackers. He also published all the complicated steps of unlocking the iPhone, accompanied by a didactic video. The method explained requires opening the device, cutting wires, soldering, then reprogramming the iPhone with some software. On August 24th of 2007, invited by the CNBC television channel, he performed the manipulation live. In the meantime, he opened a new blog devoted to the development of geolocation system for the iPhone 3G. He also dabbled in rapping under the pseudonym Tom Crows. He responded to Sony during their trial with a rap video posted on YouTube. In 2010, he was also the first to hack the PlayStation 3, and he did it in five weeks while several hacker communities tried for three years. Number 6. David L. Smith all of David Smith's popularity came after his creation of the computer worm Melissa on March 26th of 1999. The worm overloaded messaging systems by spreading from user to user via infected emails. There was more than 60,000. Melissa was a malicious computer virus. The virus was contained in an email attachment, which when opened would enable access to a victim's computer. The virus was designed to propagate itself, spreading to other computers through email and infecting them as well. The estimated damage was three $385 million. Smith, who was arrested and sentenced to two years in prison and fined $5,000, said the worm was never intended to cause damage. He even said, I did not expect or anticipate the amount of damage that took place. When I posted the virus, I expected that any financial injury would be minor and incidental. In fact, I included features designed to prevent substantial damage. I had no idea there would be such profound consequences to others. The first time the Melissa worm was hidden, it was in a file containing containing porn site passwords. Why the Melissa name, you ask? Cherchez la femme, as they say. Smith says that the name Melissa comes from an exotic dancer he met during a trip to Florida. Number five, Robert Tappan Morris. On November 2nd of 1988, Robert Tappan Morris, a computer science student, released what was later called the Morris Worm, which crashed scores of computers on the internet. In fact, it's thought to have affected 10% of them. During Morris's trial, the court estimated that the cost of eliminating the virus would be between $200 and $53,000. This was the event that led to the creation of the CERT Coordination Center and the Phage mailing list. As for Morris, he's the first person in history to have been convinced convicted under the U.S. Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. The Morris worm is a celebrity in its own right, considered to be the very first worm on the internet. What's a computer worm? It's a type of malware that spreads copies of itself from computer to computer. It can replicate itself without any human intervention and can spread quickly across the network or the internet. It means that if it isn't stopped, it just keeps going and going until there's no computers left to infect. Worms often use a computer network to spread itself, allowing it to infect other computers on the same network network or those connected through the internet. They can cause damage to files, networks, and other systems. They can also be used to gather data or gain access to networks and systems. In other words, they're bad news. Very bad news. Number 4. Julian Assange. Courageous whistleblower for some, dangerous activist to others, Julian Assange has both feverent supporters and formidable enemies. A computer scientist by profession and an activist for free, open and transparent internet, he doesn't hesitate to hack several sites of state organizations like NASA or the Pentagon. In 2006, he founded WikiLeaks with other hacktivist friends and became one of its main administrators. The objective of this nonprofit NGO was to make public confidential documents concerning cases of corruption or other abuses in circles of power like politics, army, finance, or entertainment. In 2010, WikiLeaks caused a real explosion in the intelligence community by making public more than 700,000 confidential documents related to the diplomatic and military actions of the U.S. We see an Apache helicopter shooting at civilians who obviously don't pose a threat. At least 18 people were including two journalists from the Reuters news agency. As you can imagine, the Americans didn't like this too much and they ended up targeting him with 18 charges, including espionage by the American justice system in 2019. For this, he risks 175 years in prison. However, the British authorities refuse to extradite him to the US. Number three, Evgeny Mikhailovich Bogekchov. 
All right, I'm gonna do my best with this name, but I don't speak Russian, so apologies. In 2015, the FBI offered a $3 million reward to anyone who could help capture hacker Eugenie Mikhailovich Bogachev, who's considered one of the most wanted hackers in the world. He was suspected of being at the origin of a large-scale hacking via software, which allowed him to recover worldwide bank details, passwords, personal data, all for an amount of about $100 million. According to federal agents, Bogachev's favorite aliases were Slavic and Lucky12345. At the head of a vast criminal network, he supervised the installation of a private software known as Game Over Zeus, which takes up information from the FBI. Nevertheless, he's very far from hiding. He obviously has no fear of being arrested and makes no secret of his very luxurious life, comfortably installed in Russia. There are many photos on the internet showing him driving luxury cars or showing off his leopard pajamas. In fact, according to the US feds, the Russian authorities tolerate all the hacker's eccentricities because he allegedly works for the country's spy services. It is likely that the Kremlin turned a blind eye to Bogachev's previous crimes in order to secure his services and use his gifts for their own benefit. And they were right to do so, when FBI officials said that the network set up by Bogachev with his Game Over Zeus software is one of the most sophisticated and harmful that they've ever seen. Number 2. Graham Ivan Clark. He was sentenced to three years in prison for hacking into hundreds of Twitter accounts. He notably hacked the accounts of Joe Biden, Barack Obama, Elon Musk, and Bill Gates. Graham Ivan Clark was only a 17-year-old teenager at the time of the crime. The young man had pleaded guilty to all counts in order to have his sentence reduced. Being very young at the time of the events, he was convicted under the Florida Youthful Offender Act and will serve his sentence in a penal institution for minors. However, if he violates his parole, he faces a minimum of 10 10 years in prison in an adult facility. In July of 2020, Graham Even Clark and two other young people, Mason Shepard and Nima Fazeli, were charged following the spectacular hack attack. A message asking subscribers to send bitcoins to an internet address had appeared on the accounts of the celebrities. According to the investigation, the scam allowed the hackers to pocket a total of $100,000. Many think that this is a very heinous crime, as the teenager grabs celebrity accounts, but the money that he stole belonged to normal normal, hard-working people. Number 1. Aaron Swartz Aaron Swartz has become a quintessential figure of activism on the internet. His commitment to freedom still marks the web today, even 10 years after he tragically took his own life, crushed by the pressure of a gigantic trial against him, which was set to start a month later, around his hacktivism in favor of free knowledge. The sudden disappearance of Aaron Swartz was a shock among internet users who shared his convictions, and even beyond. Above all, it exposed the debate on unrestricted access to scientific knowledge. It's precisely his fight for open access that earned him very strong legal reprisals. For his commitment, he's considered a of the web. His main feat was to have retrieved academic articles through a database from the MIT network. He went all in, too. 4.8 million documents from the Journal Storage Digital Library were retrieved, and with the aim of making them accessible to as many people as possible. A strong gesture, but it led the young man to hit head-on with the American legislation, intractable in terms of copyright. It's also believed that it's due to his brave actions that we have more scientific information on the internet today, and without having to submit a toll at the entrance. If you like going on Reddit, for example, that's thanks to him. Ditto if you use the free Creative Commons license, a pure child child of the internet, rest in peace. As you can see, hackers can either use their power for evil or for good. While it's true that hackers can sometimes do things that are legally considered criminal, morally that's not always the case. So what do you think? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.